Today, there are only a few drugs available to us that can effectively treat viral infections. Antimicrobial peptides hold a lot of promise as antiviral drugs. And with me to discuss the antiviral potential of antimicrobial peptides is Dr. Gil Diamond from the University of Louisville. Dr. Diamond, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, happy to be here. Dr. Diamond, a lot of good research on antimicrobial peptides, or short AMPs, has been done recently and new options, not just for antivirals, but also for antibiotics and even anti-cancer drugs, are emerging. What aspects of AMP research are you most excited about? And do you think we will soon be seeing more drugs emerging that can effectively treat uh, viral infections? Well, antimicrobial peptides have been studied for quite a while. I guess they were discovered sometime in the 1980s. Um, companies have sprung up since they were initially discovered. We discovered early on that they were active against bacteria, fungi, viruses, wide range of microbes. So there has been always a lot of excitement about their potential use as uh, drugs. Then, of course, as you mentioned, they're also potentially useful against cancer. So there's a lot of basic research, a lot of in vitro research and some animal research that, that does show that they have a lot of activity and they could be useful as drugs. I think at this point, some of the really exciting research right now is going on in examining exactly how we could modulate our own natural antimicrobial peptides, rather than giving these peptides that are from frog skin or fish skin or cow stomach or wherever they've been isolated from, uh, that if we examine our own peptides, and because a problem with the peptides themselves is that, as I mentioned, companies were uh, started as soon as these peptides were discovered, and they tried to give a variety of different peptides against the different types of infections, they didn't really work very well. So we know that the peptides are active in vitro. We know that they can work under certain conditions in animal models, but once they're given as drugs, there are some problems that have to be overcome. So there are a variety of different ways we're trying to, to, to work those things out. And as I said, one of those is to try to tweak our own natural peptides rather than give foreign ones. The other area is, instead of taking a peptide that we see that's isolated from, let's say, frog skin secretions that is very active, again, will kill bacteria, fungi, viruses, to try to look at the structure of the peptide and say, what's important in this structure that kills the microbe and design a small molecule that we can synthesize cheaply and that won't be digested by proteases and it's easily bioavailable and give that instead. So I think those are the directions that, that we're looking at, as well as cancer, which is a sort of a new area for antimicrobial peptide research. And, and that will boil down into um, exactly how these peptides work, which we also have to understand a lot more of. Can you tell us more about the background and significance of your recent research on non-natural peptomimetics as possible antiviral therapeutics for, for the herpes simplex virus and also the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So I have been working on antimicrobial peptides for quite a while. Uh, and I started recently a collaboration with Dr. Annalise Barron at Stanford University to look at molecules that uh, she has developed called antimicrobial peptoids, which are like peptides, but they're not. They're, they're as you mentioned, mimetics. And she's tweaked the structure of a peptide in such a way that it's actually completely resistant to proteases and any enzymes that might digest it. Uh, it's also actually cheaper to make and it turns out, as they've tested, not very toxic. So uh, I had been working on some viral work and we discussed it and thought about putting our hits together. And we tested uh, her peptoids against um, viruses. The one I've been working on is herpes simplex virus one, which causes cold sores. And we noticed really good activity. So uh, we started working that up. It's really exciting. These peptoids will actually basically burst the membrane. A uh, uh, herpes simplex virus is an envelope virus. So it has a capsid, which has a, the DNA inside of it. And then around that capsid is uh, a membrane, which is derived from the, our, the host cell membrane, our, our own membranes. And what we see when we uh, add the peptoids to the virus and we look under an electron microscope, we can actually see that the membranes are, are disrupted, thus 
making the uh, virus unable to infect the cell. And that's great, but we thought that unlike other antiviral drugs, which target something specific, like for, take herpes simplex virus as, a, as an example, the typical drug is some derivative of acyclovir, which targets the thymidine kinase enzyme of herpes simplex virus. So it's very specific for this virus, and it has to get into a cell that where the virus has been infected. But unlike that, this peptoid just targets the membrane, and that membrane is going to be the same on herpes simplex virus 1, herpes simplex virus 2, and SARS-CoV-2, which is also an envelope virus. So since we, I was here at the uh, University of Louisville, there's a colleague right uh, down the street in another building who uh, was analyzing anti antiviral drugs against SARS-CoV-2. So I brought some peptoid to him. Dong Hun Chang is his name, and he tested it, and we got the same activity. When we looked under the electron microscope, we saw the same thing happening. The, the, the peptoid was disrupting the membrane, thus making the virus unable to infect the, uh, the cell. So... Uh, there is a company involved in this, Maxwell Biosciences, that's helping us out, and they're they're trying to uh, take this uh, a little farther, especially with SARS-CoV-2 for obvious reasons. Uh, we're also testing right now. We're working on the herpes simplex virus aspect by looking in a mouse model, where we actually have a mouse model of we basically give the mouse a, a cold sore, and we can apply the uh, the drug to the lip, and then we're we're testing to see how active it is and which peptoid is active and exactly how it's working. So we're very excited about our, our results with the antiviral aspect of these peptoids. Why has previous research for antiviral medication only looked at very specific and uh, unique viral targets instead of focusing on a broad spectrum antiviral? So what do you think um, is a better plan of action? Well, historically, the antimicrobial world has been uh, focused on trying to figure out what in the microbe, the bacteria and the fungus, the virus, uh, is can we target that's different from something in the host? Because if you want to take a drug, obviously it can't target something in the host. So let's find a bacterial enzyme that's involved in making the, the cell wall of the bacterium and target that, which is a good idea because it, there's probably nothing similar in our body that's like that. So if you design a drug for that, it, it's good. Same thing with antivirals. They, they find something like um, in uh, remdesivir in, uh, for, for Ebola, which targets an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, which is an enzyme we don't have. And fortunately enough, it may be enough similarity to the one in SARS-CoV-2. So you can get some spectrum there. Uh, they may act against multiple different types of microbes. Um, but there hasn't been this thought, as far as I know, of targeting something that every microbe has. And that's what we've developed over evolution with the antimicrobial peptides, these, these molecules that will disrupt the membrane of the microbe, specifically the, the bacterial membrane or the fungal membrane. And oddly enough, um, surprisingly enough, the, the viral membrane, because it's different from the bacterial membrane. If you think about it, it comes from our own, our own host cell. So you'd think that if we gave a, a drug that would target a membrane that was from our own host cell, it would also be toxic, but it turns out it's not. And that actually goes to how the virus gets its membrane. And it's not exactly a sa the same as we have on our cells. It's different, it's closer in structure to the bacterial membrane. So these molecules can actually target everything. These peptoids, for example, these mimics that I'm working on um, can also kill bacteria and fungi as well. And I'm working with uh, another company that has developed a different type of mimic and, and we're looking at uh, antifungal drugs there as well. They do the same thing. They target the structure of the, the fungal membrane and uh, are able to then inactivate, kill the fungus, inactivate the virus as well. Antibiotics almost always carry a threat of resistance, which is why we often do not use uh, new antibiotics. Instead, we hold them back as a last resort against various bacteria. Do you see something similar happening with antiviral drugs? So this goes to the whole uh, point I was making before about how historically people who have developed antimicrobials have targeted something, uh, some enzyme in the microbe. And the problem there, of course, is if you're targeting an enzyme, an enzyme is a protein, and a protein 
is encoded by a gene. And I've always said, if there's a gene, there's going to be a mutation. So just the way life is, these microbes will develop resistance if you're targeting a particular enzyme, a gene encoded enzyme. Uh, so as we see with SARS-CoV-2, we know that it mutates. Um, all Everything mutates, everything evolves. So they're always going to be evolving uh, resistance to drugs that are targeting uh, gene encoded proteins or enzymes. The nice thing about antimicrobial peptides is that they don't really target a, uh, in general, there are exceptions, but in general, they don't target uh, a protein, something encoded by a gene, but rather the structure of the membrane. And that's not something you can really change. Now, there are bacteria that can evolve resistance in a different way, but in general, it's very difficult for them to evolve resistance to antimicrobial peptides. And we believe, we haven't done the research yet, but we believe viruses are the same, that it, because the viruses themselves aren't the ones evolving the, the membrane, it's, it's the host. So it, you're not gonna be able to evolve that type of resistance to these, to these drugs. So I think there's a real uh, good chance that these drugs will be useful against a wide range of microbes the antiviral ones may be able to target every envelope virus. There may be exceptions depending on how they, they acquire their membranes, but we believe at least a large range of, uh, of envelope viruses, such as SARS-CoV-2 or Ebola or HSV-1, could be targeted by the same, the same drug. Can you maybe also tell us a bit more about where your research priorities lie for 2022? So right now, I'm looking at two different directions with antimicrobial peptides. The first, and I mentioned this early on, is can we tweak, can we adjust, can we enhance our own natural antimicrobial peptides to prevent or treat infections? Uh, the area I'm really focusing on right now is vitamin D because it turns out that vitamin D, among all its other great activities in the body, and I highly recommend you take vitamin D, especially in the winter for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere um, right now, uh, vitamin D can also turn up the expression of an antimicrobial peptide. So we know that vitamin D is certainly non-toxic. It's very hard to, to get vitamin D toxicity. You can take a lot of it, it won't really harm you. Um, working on ways of actually directly targeting vitamin D to places where we might need more of these antimicrobials. And then that will turn up the expression of these, produce more antibiotic antimicrobial peptide and thus prevent or treat infections. That's one area. The other is the peptide mimetics area, the, the peptoids that I'm working on with Dr. Barron, as well as these other uh, small molecule mimics. Uh, that are active against fungi and to try to develop these as, uh, as drugs against a wide range of, of microbes. Dr. Diamond, many thanks for your answers to all these questions and all the very best for your further research. Thank you. Thank you very much.